Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name's Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Dr. Edison Magies. Dr. Edison is a research assistant at Iowa State University with the field epi team, working with Dr. Daniel and Harace's team and all the good work that uh, you guys use. Edison, I know you're a veteran of the podcast, not only this podcast, but uh, the SDRS podcast, the studios you find yourself in now. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I know you've been on before, but just in case we've got some new listeners, Edison, why don't we start with giving them a little bit of introduction background on yourself? Sure, yeah. Taking advantage here of the, the equipment of the podcast for the SDIS. But yeah, Edison Magalhães, I'm from originally from Brazil. That's where I did my, my vet school. Uh, worked there for around four years in the Brazilian swine industry as a swine practitioner uh, and came in 2019 to do my master's with Dr. Daniel Linhares here at Iowa State to that team. I focus a lot on PERS regional control programs on that time, but now I'm working more on the data science as a part for applied to the swine industry here at the same team as part of my PhD dissertation. United Animal Health has been innovating nutrition that feeds the animals that feed the world since 1956. Now a multinational ag biosciences company, we help people impact the health of their animals with less labor, less variation, less drag, less challenge, and less natural resources. Learn more at unitedanh.com. Edison, I know you're passionate about data science, and uh, you recently published a very interesting paper trying to do real-time prediction of nursery mortality. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what that entails, uh, what information you looked at to build a model that can predict nursery mortality, and then how effective the model was? Sure, yeah. The, everything started when we start integrating multiple data streams uh, from a work that we published previously in 2021, looking at risk factors of uh, winter finish mortality. And we, we analyzed uh, that data from breeding to market. We saw that salt farm factors and factors related to, to the conditions uh, of the, that the pigs are placed in nursery sites, they are really important in terms of uh, as risk factors for downstream mortality. That was looking at retrospective data. So we said, okay, the next logical step is to try to use that same data that retrospectively had a good, uh, explained a lot of the variation in mortality for the groups, to use that same data to try to predict the downstream mortality of the pigs. Because if that happens, we can take advantage of that data, usually from the salt farms, they are available on a weekly basis, uh, to, for example, this week, I'm going to use the information from the batches of pigs that were winned last week, and the information of the nursery sites where those pigs were placed last week to run the model and predict the mortality of those pigs downstream. So in this case, we, for, we, we focus on the nursery mortality. A little bit over it was around the first 60 days mortality that we, we, we focused to predict. So we use the same approach, utilizing that information related to the salt farm. Uh, on the publication, people would have access to the variables more specifically, but basically, information from the cell farm related to productivity, uh, health, diagnostics, uh, infrastructure, and management factors that are occurring in the cell farm to kind of characterize the, the, the types of the of the, the winnet pigs coming out of each cell farm in a large production system in the U.S. So we actually trained the model with around data for 3,242 uh, 3, groups of pigs uh, marketed uh, over this, this time. And also information uh, when those pigs were placed in the nursery site. So what were the stocking conditions, uh, type of information related to feeder or drinker, so conditions at placement. And we use multiple regression and, and machine learning models to, to do the prediction, compare the performance of those models. And we found out that the, the support vector machine, a machine learning model, specifically for that data, for that system, was the most accurate in terms of, of prediction. And when we, after conducting this step of comparing different models on forecasting nursery mortality, we brought new data for, specifically from 70, 72 groups that were actually in the field, and we used the same model to predict the mortality of those groups. And when we did that, 
Uh, of course, the performance in terms of prediction was a little bit lower compared to the original data set, especially because it was a, just a small amount of pigs. But this was simulating an ongoing and weekly prediction that we want to implement, for example, in, a, in the reality of a production system. So that model, when we did that, the accuracy of our, was a, of around 77% on predicting groups uh, that would have mortality, nursery mortality, above 5%. Or below 5%. So we kind of characterize above 5% as high predicted nursery mortality and below that value as low predicted nursery mortality. Fantastic, Edison. Um, you know, there may be some producers out there that don't have 3,000 data sets to, to make the fit for the model. You got any thoughts, Edison, for like the minimum number of nursery closeouts or minimum number of situations where a producer could even begin to say, OK, maybe I have enough data to make a fit for a model for my system to do this sort of approach? Yeah, that's really important. And not only the amount of data, but also the reality of the system, maybe the, the, the information that what's happening in the south farm maybe is not as predictive. Uh, in your reality as it can be in other production systems. So there's another component. But yeah, of course, I wouldn't say that, for example, for 30, 40 groups, you're not able to do a really good training of those models. So I would say capturing data, if you don't have a lot of data, try to uh, capture data over years so you can maximize that and you also control for that when you're doing the prediction. So there's opportunity for even... Uh, small, medium, and large production systems to apply that same same similar approach. Because when we did this prediction, like I mentioned, it was 77% of accuracy, but that meaning uh, the model, of, unfortunately, the sensitivity, that means in this case is predicting groups that were going to have a low mortality, but they actually had a high mortality when they went to the field. So that happened. So sensitivity was a little bit low. So that happened. But that kind of makes sense, right? Because we are using South Farm data to predict. And if the model using that data is saying that it's going to be low, we know that there are factors that occur during the nursery phase that can increase the mortality. So we are not including that in the model. So that kind of makes sense. But the positive predicted values was about 92%. So when the model said that the mortality was going to be high for the groups, that was 92% of the times accurate. So they're really saying that, hey, based on these south farm conditions and the conditions that place me in the nursery site, these groups are going to have a high mortality. 92% of the times for that system, uh, it was correct, the prediction. Edison, I'll, I'll ask you to put your pig producer hat on, right? So if, if you're the owner of the pigs or you're the production leader of the pigs, would you share this model with the folks that take care of the pigs every day? Would you tell them that the model is going to predict good or bad performance in the pigs? Or would this just be something you would use in the office? Something to help you understand, do I have enough pigs to meet my packer commitments? Do I need to buy some pigs to replace pigs because it's telling me my mortality is going to be high? I have to imagine it could be sensitive to, to tell a contract grower or even your employees in a nursery that, hey, this group, our model says, is going to be pretty bad. It could potentially be de demotivating. How would you handle that information? Or how did this production system handle that information? Yeah, that's a really good comment. And actually, that's something that we are actually uh, starting to work in partnership with this company. That is basically, if you predict that the mortality are gonna, is going to be high for some specific groups, and you let the folks that take care of those groups uh, know about that, and if they are able to decrease that to beat the odds, they're going to maybe receive some bonus because, hey, you guys really beat the odds. The model was saying that it what was going to be high, and you guys went there and the mortality was, was low. So this could be a way, a potential way to utilize these, like you mentioned, you could use for strategies, marketing, and other things, but don't, as part of use with your, your the employees as well, right? Yeah, I think that's a great, great example, Edison, of where you could turn that situation around and maybe make it a positive, maybe make it a motivating thing. And Edison, there is no truth to what Daniel told me that the model said that if I'm the veterinarian, the mortality will always be high. Please tell me there's no truth to that, that that association was something he just made up, correct? <laughs> they just made up. <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure. 
light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. Well, Edison, thank you very much for um, all your work in the data science space. It's a really exciting area for the pig production industry. We've got lots of data. We need to do a better job of putting it to use. And I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with our audience. Yeah, very exciting. I, I have enjoyed working this area, even though I was working the field before. But yeah, we have a lot of data. There's a lot of opportunities there. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you very much for coming on the show. And to our audience, thank you for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please check out our website at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.